Hey you, yes, you behind the screen. Look away for a moment. Check out your surroundings. Tell me, what do you see? Notice the smallest things? Bolts, pins, keys, forks, knives, jewelry. Think about the objects that you don't see, which are definitely there. The wires, parts of the device that you currently use to watch this video. Many of those items are made from different metals. We all take them for granted. Every day we use and buy metal objects. Thankfully, we have all the necessary resources to mine those materials. But did you ever think about the real cost of the mining process? You may think, well, I paid for all those things. Absolutely, you did. But there's a bigger price to pay. The mining process is truly wrecking havoc on the environment. Its consequences are severe and far-reaching. The most obvious is the environmental damage deforestation, soil erosion, and water pollution. But the process has also some social and economic consequences leading to the exploitation of workers and child labor. Extremely unsafe working conditions make people sick. Additionally, the demand causes geopolitical tensions and even armed conflicts as countries compete for access to these resources. Again, you may think, okay, what can I do? That's life, it's not easy. Not like we can live without metals or mine them somewhere in space. You're right, life is not easy, but I won't be so sure about the impossibility of mining in space. There actually seems to be one object in the solar system where we can get some of those precious metals. And no, it's not Earth. This is not a fantasy of a crazy scientist. This is not science fiction. This is the reality with a very real NASA mission. The agency plans to send a spacecraft to a metallic space body that apparently costs 70,000 times more than the whole economy of planet Earth. Yep, you heard it right. 70,000 times more sounds insane. And I can already hear your questions. Where is this object? How do we even know that it contains metals? And when will we have the opportunity to start the mining process there? No worries, we have all the answers. Let's see how this metal badass was even discovered. How can it be useful to us and why NASA decided to send a spacecraft there? Space mining. Is the upcoming NASA mission gonna make everyone a billionaire? For instance, let's talk about nickel, which is used in batteries, including rechargeable nickel-cadmium batteries. Currently, the price of nickel is around $23,000 per metric ton. As you can see, it has grown more than three times since 1980. In 2021, the global nickel market size was $31.5 billion. The main exporters of nickel and nickel products were Canada, the USA, Russia, UAE, and Norway. In 2021, only Canada exported nickel and nickel products worth $3.63 billion. It was followed by the USA with $2.2 billion. Nickel and nickel products make up a significant part of the export for some countries. For example, in 2021, Zimbabwe exported goods worth $6.03 billion. 20% of it, $1.24 billion, were nickel and nickel products. With every year, global nickel demand grows. It's expected to fourfold over the next 30 years as electric vehicles with batteries almost entirely replace traditional cars. However, metals are non-renewable and their resources on Earth are extremely limited. Nickel deposits in Canada are expected to run out in 2032 followed by the USA in 2034. In 2039, Russia most probably will also run out of nickel. So, what are we gonna do next? Well, one method is finding a good alternative to metals, and another way is mining metals in space. Yep, you heard it right, mining in space. Let me show you where we can actually do that. Meet Psyche 16. 
a metal asteroid in the solar system. It was actually the 16th asteroid that was discovered by astronomers. That also explains the number in its name. Obviously, now we know about hundreds of thousands of asteroids. But back then, in the 19th century, discovering an asteroid was kind of a big deal. The main character of this video was first noticed in 1852 by Italian astronomer Annibale de Gasparisa. He named it Psyche, after the Greek goddess of the soul. Further studies of the object suggested that Psyche is made entirely almost of iron and nickel, just like the core of our planet. Only the Earth succeeded in forming the mantle, the crust and everything. And Psyche, well, wasn't that lucky. Aside from iron and nickel, it apparently also has some rare metals like gold, platinum, copper, cobalt, iridium and rhenium. The metallic composition sets Psyche apart from other big asteroids that are usually made from rock or ice. If it's really the remnant of a core of a protoplanet, then through studying the asteroid, we'll be able to learn a lot about the formation of our planet. This fact explains the major scientific interest in this asteroid since we cannot directly study the core of our Earth. It is too deep, too hot, under immense pressure beyond our technological capabilities. Now, it seems like we've found the twin of Earth's core in our solar system, and it's a giant chunk, almost entirely from metal, floating in space. And it's not as hot as our core, so we can actually explore it. But where is Psyche located? Can we see it? Given that there's such a high interest in this object and the fact that it was discovered in the 19th century, you may assume that it's close to us. Well, I won't put it exactly like that. Psyche is chilling between Jupiter and Mars. The space between those two planets is known as the main asteroid belt in the solar system. It's home to millions of asteroids. Our metal buddy is located at a distance ranging from 378 million to 497 million kilometers. That's 235 million to 309 million miles from the Sun. That's 2.5 to 3.3 astronomical units. Just as a reminder that one astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Psyche completes one orbit around the Sun in five Earth years. However, it takes just over four hours to rotate once on its axes. Using a combination of infrared emissions observations and different calculation methods, scientists estimate that Psyche is around 226 kilometers, 140 miles, in diameter. It is roughly equivalent to the state of Massachusetts in the United States or the island of Hokkaido in Japan. Additionally, the asteroid is massive enough that its gravitational perturbations on other asteroids can be observed. This enables mass measurement. According to the latest data, it's around 2.72 times 10 to the power of 19 kilograms. It's like around 130,000 Everests or 4 billion pyramids of Giza. No wonder Psyche is one of the 10 most massive asteroids in the asteroid belt. It represents 1% of the belt's mass. Observations also helped scientists to determine its approximate shape. Apparently, Psyche looks like a potato. Ah, and just to clarify, there are no photos of Psyche yet. Everything you see here is just a 3D model. But wait, wait, wait. If there are no images and no spacecraft has ever been on this asteroid yet, how do we know that it contains metals? First, spectroscopy helped a lot with this. This technique analyzes the light reflecting off an object. It revealed that Psyche's surface reflects more light at certain wavelengths than asteroids composed of rock and ice. That fact indicated that its surface is largely composed of metal, possibly iron nickel. That combination is much denser and more reflective than rock and ice. Additionally, observations of Psyche conducted by the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico also provided evidence for the asteroid's metallic composition. The radar reflections were consistent with a highly reflective surface. 
So it's highly unlikely that scientists are wrong about the composition of Psyche. But if this asteroid really contains all of these metals, can we all start mining there and become billionaires? Well, it has a potential economic value that we can't just ignore. NASA scientist Lindy Elkins Tanton suggested that only the iron on the asteroid could be worth as much as 10 quintillion dollars. Have you ever heard of such a number? Here it is. Yep, that's a 20-figure sum. Just to compare, the entire global economy is worth roughly 110 trillion dollars. Now, let's see those numbers together. Just wow. But there are a lot of buts here. First, new research from the University of Arizona has uncovered shocking evidence that challenges a long-held belief. According to the latest findings, Psyche seems to be less metallic and dense than scientists thought. Therefore, it may not be a failed planetary core, but a rubble pile. This means that the asteroid's scientific and economic value may be significantly lower than previously thought. Anyway, we won't know this for sure until we actually get physically closer to this asteroid. But is Psyche our only hope to find some precious metals in space worth our attention? Apparently not. Again, according to NASA, there are still plenty of asteroids rich in minerals in the belt between Mars and Jupiter. For instance, there's Davida, a large asteroid that is worth even more than Psyche because of its content of nickel, iron, cobalt, nitrogen, ammonia, and hydrogen. Look at this number. Yep, it's 27 quintillion dollars. With an estimated value of 100 billion dollars per person on Earth, the asteroids between Jupiter and Mars hold the promise of untold wealth. Obviously, if we can figure out how to mine there, and if we choose to distribute those resources equally, and if the price for those resources stays at the same level. A lot of ifs and buts, huh? Well, let's be honest here. The potential mining in space is more possible than equal distribution of resources. Also, we shouldn't ignore the technical challenges of mining on an asteroid. Robots and spacecraft for this don't exist, at least not yet. However, there's a high possibility that the asteroids will likely be mined sometime in the future. But once metals from Psyche actually reach the Earth, the influx of supply will most drive their prices to the ground. And here, the economy can change forever. Precious metals won't be precious anymore. And that actually answers our main question. Unfortunately, we all won't become billionaires when we start mining on Psyche. Or we will. But the inflation will be so high that those billions won't cost anything. On the other hand, if only one country comes up with the technology first and starts mining on the asteroid, it can drastically change the geopolitics on the planet Earth. This would hardly make humanity better in any sense. And as we've already hinted, one country is already taking steps toward exploring Psyche. America's space agency, NASA, plans to send a spacecraft to the asteroid. The mission is called Psyche. The spacecraft, surprise, surprise, is also named Psyche. But what's the point of sending a spacecraft to the asteroid? Is it going to start mining there? No, humanity doesn't have the technology for that yet. For now, NASA has more of a scientific interest. The agency had never explored a celestial body largely made of metal before. Additionally, if Psyche is really a partial core of a shattered planetesimal, it can tell us a lot about the formation of our own planet. Or maybe we'll just learn that the rubble theory was actually true. NASA equipped the spacecraft with the best technologies to get all the necessary information. Psyche spacecraft will use radio waves to measure the asteroid's gravity, combined with maps of the asteroid's surface features. This should yield clues to the asteroid's interior structure. Sounds fancy and expensive. But actually, the Psyche mission is part of NASA's low-cost robotic space mission program. 
it's gonna cost something around $960.6 million to send this cutie to the asteroid. To compare, NASA's Preservance Rover project price tag was nearly $3 billion. Now that we know about the costs, it's time to learn about the timeline of the mission. Well, the mission was approved in 2017. The spacecraft was set to launch in August 2022 and arrive at the asteroid in 2026. However, due to some software issues and development problems, it missed its optimal launch window. Due to the postponement, once a four-year journey will likely extend to a six-year one because scientists missed the best possible alignment of the planets. They need to recalculate the energy needed to reach the destination because the orbital positions of Earth and Psyche will make for a longer distance to cover. Now the spacecraft is scheduled to enter orbit around Psyche in August 2029. It will spend there around 21 months gathering all the necessary information, and only then will we learn about the real nature of the asteroid. Of course, it will take years to study all the gathered materials. Only then it will be possible to tell if mining on Psyche will actually be worth it. At this particular moment, it would be much more effective and valuable to focus on minimizing the negative impact of mining on Earth and searching for alternatives to various metals. And in around 15 years or so, after scientists research the whole data from Psyche, we can start the real talk about mining outside our planet.